Hi there, it's Z here. And today I'm going to be sharing a Python programming script that I've written that uses linear programming techniques to optimize capital budgeting. Why I've chosen this technique is uh, quite a lot of attention has been given to uh, fancier machine learning algorithms, but uh, you don't often hear about uh, the more tried and tested optimization algorithms that are out there. And linear programming is one of these uh, that uh, even though it's very simple, uh, you'd be surprised how often it uh, still works and applies to many uh, decision-making support tools. So uh, we're going to be looking at principles behind linear programming, uh, applying it to a practical problem on capital budgeting, and I'm going to do a code walkthrough. Uh, I will be moving fairly quickly, so uh, I recommend that uh, you have a look at the article that accompanies this video if you want more detail. So first off, what is linear programming? Linear programming is a technique where if you can represent a system as a series of linear relationships between the variables, so say here you've got a y and an x, and you know that uh, y must be three times of x and so on so forth and basically each of these uh, relationships forms a line and you see they crisscross and there's a gray area now if you want to maximize y as a variable it's a simple case of just uh, moving a horizontal line up to the highest point where it touches the triangle and if you want the minimum uh, it's the same except you move that line to the lowest point so here would be negative three as the minimum and positive six y as the maximum and then you can read off what is the equivalent x value so it's a uh, very intuitive easy to understand and also because of that uh, it's something that uh, can be applied quite uh, simply so we'll be looking at using it for a problem called the capital budgeting problem. So here's the setup. Uh, we're going to be doing this using uh, Python, but I thought I'll explain with uh, Excel. And some of you may be familiar with Excel's native solver uh, function. Uh, sorry, solver add-in. Uh, it comes together with Excel. You just need to add it in. Um, and uh, we're going to run it here. And I'm going to show you why uh, when your model gets a bit uh, more complex, you shouldn't be doing it in Excel. So uh, say you have a portfolio of projects and there are five projects and uh, you don't have the funds to do each one. So I set up the spreadsheet in such a way that uh, this column M is a on off column where if uh, I click and I type in one, it turns the project on. As you can see, you don't have the money to do each one because this is the uh, sum of all year one, year two, and year three. And these green boxes are the uh, budget limitations you have. So obviously you can't do all of them. Um, you are given the individual project NPVs. So one way of doing this is uh, through trial and error, you could be turning off certain projects and seeing whether or not you can still uh, meet the requirements of the uh, budget constraints uh, and find the point where you have the maximum um, NPV. Thankfully, linear programming uh, doesn't uh, need you to do that if you have the right sort of tools. And uh, we're going to be using Excel's uh, built-in um, solver to do that. So uh, I've set up the solver where the first step in any linear programming problem conceptually is always what do you want to optimize and uh, are you maximizing or minimizing it so here we're trying to maximize the npv from the selected projects so q8 and we do that by changing the which project we select so those are decision variables and there are a number of constraints and the first one is that uh, these decision variables can only be binary so uh, this is linear programming uh, but it is a special form called integer linear programming or binary uh, linear programming. And uh, I've got a bunch of other constraints that say that uh, NOP basically saying that the individual year um, selected capital cannot be higher than your uh, capital thresholds. And to keep things interesting, I've also added in conditions related to uh, contingent projects where if uh, project one is selected, project two must be selected as well. Or uh, if project one is not selected, then they're both not selected. So they have to move in tandem. And we also have uh, mutually exclusive projects where uh, project three and five 
can either uh, not happen at all or if one of them happens the other one cannot happen and this is something that you quite often see maybe because in real life there are work fund constraints or uh, maybe they tap on the same vendor or for whatever reason so uh, I, you can see that there are other um, constraints that i've added where the two projects having to go together you can see it's uh, this one m2 equals m3 now for the mutually exclusive one, I have uh, M12 less than one. And what's M12? M12 is the sum of these two. And it's less than one because uh, if one of them is selected, it will be less than one. If none of them is selected, it's still less than one, but you cannot have both of them selected because two is uh, not less than one. So, uh, so much for the setup. Now, if I do this in Excel, it's quite straightforward. I hit click. Uh, and it solves it. It says all constraints and optimal conditions that are satisfied. And uh, it says that choose projects one, two and project five, and that will give you your maximum NPV. Now we're going to do the same thing in Python and it looks like this. So uh, pop is a library that we're going to be using and um, it's importing the uh, necessary libraries and you can see this is just the same information from a moment ago except now i'm uh, pulling the information in as a csv file um, and these are the kpec constraints and you can ignore this particular cell now uh, this one is an interesting bit where you what i'm doing in this piece of code is i am uh, iterating over the list to find all the individual rows that have this relationship uh, between different projects and forming sort of a subset. So you can see uh, projects three and five are mutually exclusive. Projects one and two are dependent on each other. So they must both go at the same time or not at all. Uh, I've also got something about mandatory projects that I've not used here. And this is where pop comes in. So uh, this is the actual model building. And you can see the process is very similar. So we have to define an objective function. So I'm just going to click through. Uh, and now you define your constraints. And you notice that I've used this for i in range, and it's a loop. And uh, this is one of the many benefits of using a programming approach because if you loop over something, you don't have to uh, select it again and again. Uh, say for an example in Excel, you end up having to do each year and setting uh, a constraint and you have to look line by line and setting it. But through the, uh, the power of uh, looping over, it does it for you automatically. So this is for setting all the individual constraints for uh, related projects. I'm setting the capital constraints for each individual year in this box. And I'm running the solver. And uh, you can see it's uh, one second. Uh, and it comes out with a number of 29. And the rest of the code is uh, cleanup and representation. So if I click this, it's the same. It says uh, choose one and two and five. And this box tells you this is the summary. This is your utilization of capital. And uh, there's also some boxes that show uh, what is the selected and drop projects. Now, at this point, you may be saying, uh, I don't understand what the big deal is because uh, I can do this easily in Excel. Why should I bother trying to uh, understand and uh, do this in something a little bit more complicated? Now, I'm going to show you why. Uh, now, say for example, I don't have a simple list, but I have something more complex. So instead of uh, a five times uh, three year horizon, I now have a uh, much longer list. And now I have four years and uh, I haven't changed any of the code. So I'm going to restart and I'm going to run all. And uh, in a blink of an eye, well, more than a blink, maybe a couple of blinks of an eye, uh, what you see is the code has run and it's quite a long list. And you can see it's got multiple projects that are mutually exclusive. It's got some that are even mandatory uh, and some that are contingent. Uh, and what and it's got multiple years as well. So uh, even with all these different conditions, the code has just cranked the handle and spat out a result that tells us that 25 of the 30 are selected 
uh, this is the total NPV, and this is the list of what's selected and what's dropped. And because it's code, you can even do things like uh, you can set the capital constraint so that you allow a 10% overrun and then very quickly rerun it. Because this is something that often happens in projects where uh, rather than be constrained with what you're given, you could say that, look, if you give me X percent more budget, I can improve your NPV by Y percent. So um, programmatically, developing a model like this has a lot of advantages over just doing it in Excel because you're not tied into the data structure. Uh, and if you take it one step further, this piece of script could even be running on a server somewhere and interacting directly with a database and visualization tools where you could feed the output into a dashboard, grab the data from some centralized SAP system or whatever. So it's a, a lot of advantages. So uh, realize this video has been uh, quite a speed through. So I do have a look at the article. And if you like what you've seen, uh, uh, this is actually a snippet from a larger uh, tutorial that I've been working on where I cover more advanced tools. So other than just uh, the Excel data solver, uh, we look at other um, open source um, tools. And here's an example, Open Solver, where you can actually combine some of the benefits of doing it on a spreadsheet where you can see in this video, this actually is uh, the Python code directly operating in Excel uh, to even more advanced uh, tools where you allow uh, randomness to be modeled. Uh, analytic solver is an example, it's a commercial tool. And uh, I stick to the whole capital budgeting uh, example and uh, I cover more and more complex um, scenarios where uh, you're not only looking at uh, the projects that have dependencies, but also randomness uh, in the project portfolio uh, where the uh, capex can change and NPVs can change and even things where the projects can change their phasing. So if you're interested, uh, have a look at the link. And uh, if you like this, uh, please uh, leave me some comments and let me know what you think. Thanks. Till next time. Bye.